Welcome back everybody. This is Steve. Is this the perfect Raspberry Pi case? Stick around and find out. Welcome back everybody, this is Steve, and I am going to be working on a new Raspberry Pi case. So I think the first thing that we need to do is open up the toolbox and get out the knife and get this thing open. Just like that, what do we got inside? Big bag, little tiny box. Perfect. Alright, this is the Argon Pi 4 V2. And what I like about this, hold on, let me get a Raspberry Pi for you. Oh, Raspberry Pi box, Raspberry Pi. What I like about this over any other Raspberry Pi case is that the Raspberry Pi has got ports everywhere. So we've got USB-C, we've got two micro HDMI, we've got audio, we've got USB ports. We've got more USB ports, we've got networking port, we've got GPIO headers, we've got camera on the top and display adapter on the top, or in this case, camera and display adapter. I pointed to them backwards, but you'll forgive me on that. But the problem with this is that no matter which way you sit it, there's always something shoving its wires in your face, and I don't like that. So, Argon 1 to the rescue. And Argon 1 had another case that I just ran into that I really like. Again, back to the Raspberry Pi box, because it's in here. This case, this is the Argon One Neo, which is also a pretty slick little case, which is what I took this out of. So I like this one for compact size, but I like this one for desktop replacement. So let's take a look at the desktop replacement features here. Open that up. I hate it when they do that. More tools. I don't like to rip my boxes. I don't know why. I'm just like that. All right. Pull this puppy out of here. Pull this out of here. Uh oh, hold on. Oh, yeah. All right. Now, what we've got is instructions. Whatever. Box, whatever. Okay. What we've got is an all plastic bottom so your Wi Fi can get out. There's a spot on the front for the SD card, but it is convenient. Number one, you're not removing the SD card when it's on and it doesn't stick itself in your face when you are really doing your normal business. It just kind of, it's just out of the way. So that's fine. But then it's got all these port replicators on the back and two full-size HDMI ports. Ooh, looking good there. There's also a magnetic cover that goes over the GPIO ports and the GPIO, GPIO ports are colored and they are labeled. So that's very nice. Put that magnetic cover back on. Open this puppy up. What do we got? We've got heat sinks, heat sink goo and screws and feet. So let's get the feet on. And I already have the heat sink goo on from using the other case. So we'll just reuse that for this case here. But I do want to put these feet on. All right, so now we got all four feet on the bottom. That's gonna give it the ability to hold itself in place a little tiny bit better, which is pretty good. Next up is to get the Raspberry Pi itself in the case. So here is your adapter for HDMI and AV to go to HDMI and AV. Let's get that mounted up real quick. Can only go on one way if you want it to work. So we'll get that on nice and positive like that. And there is a fan built in, but it looks like it is a two wire fan. So it's gonna be interesting to see how they work that out for cooling purposes. There's a little IR sensor up here so you can build in your own um, remote control ability. And there is a power in and a power button. And this power button is supposed to do a safe power down. So all kinds of positive features so far. But this is gonna be my favorite one. Plug that in, plug that in. Let's pull the 
card out of the way so we don't have to mess with that while we're doing this. Okay. Screwdriver. We've got a couple of different lengths of screws here. We've got four long screws, two heat sinks. And again, my heat sinks are already installed from a previous case, so we're good there. Heat sink pads. Those are heat transfer pads. So let's see what we can do about the long screws and the short screws. Are we going to have to look at the manual? Yuck. All right, fine. Let's look at the manual. Where did it go? All right, so this is actually a pretty nice little manual here. I like it so far. I mean, I'm on page two, but still. It tells you what it is. Heat sink pads, HDMI daughter board, we did all that. Put the Raspberry Pi in the case, we did all that. Okay, so we need the small screws to go inside. And they get strategically placed. So, small screw goes here. Done. Small screw goes in the back corner here. Done. And then two screws here. That's not where that goes. It goes there. And that one started to cross thread, so I backed it out a little bit to realign the threads and then put it back in place. Okay. Power button mode. Default setting. You need to press the power button to power on from shutdown or power outage, power, uh, pin two or three, power will flow directly to Raspberry Pi IO, no need to press power button. So we'll leave it in the default setting for now and see how we like that, but you can choose one or the other. That's where the jumpers are, is down in the front, and then use the round head screws to fasten the bottom cover. And plug it in and get the power button control. Awesome. Let's put the cover on and screw that down. And this is a Raspberry Pi 4 4 gig model, but this will work with any Raspberry Pi 4 model. And overall I'm pretty impressed with the quality of the construction and I'm impressed with the quality of the instruction and so far this is a pretty good match. Another option that you can get for this case is a sled that replaces the bottom cover that allows you to put an M2 SATA drive on here that is USB 3 and takes up one of your USB 3 ports and that makes this even more of a desktop warrior. Alright, let's get this thing plugged in and turned on and uh, get that software installed. So, SD card in and now, look at that, that's nice and pretty. So that's just what you got right there. It is a little slope towards the front to accommodate the larger size in the back. Again, you've got your GPIO pins accessible if you want to play GPIO games. Uh, two HDMI, USB-C for power input, AV out, USB 2, USB 3, Ethernet, power button. And then up front is your port accessibility. So. That is the thing. Let's get this thing over into its more natural habitat of being plugged in and powered on and take it from there. And then we have a 
command line that we need to run to install the power button and fan control software. So what we need to do is log into our Raspberry Pi, which I am logged into via SSH, and type in the following command, curl space https colon slash slash download dot argon 40 dot com slash argon one dot sh and pipe that to bash the text of this will be in the description down below so you don't need to take notes here because i've already taken notes for you let's run it all right and it is running through a bunch of stuff installing some i2c tools installing some python 3 updates and the system is set up and it says to reboot it. So let's reboot it. And I don't have permission to reboot over the SSH session without becoming root. So we'll do sudo reboot. And there it goes. Okay, we are back from a reboot and all the tools are installed. So let's take a look and see what we can do with this. There is a command argon one dash config argon one fan speed configuration tool. This will remove the existing configuration. Well, I don't have one, so yes, let's continue. Select the fan mode. Always on, adjust to temperatures, customize behavior. So at 55 degrees Celsius in the instruction manual, it says the fan will be at 10%. At 60, it will be at 55. At 65, it will be at 100%. And you can also edit the Etsy argon one dconf directly. So let's do three to customize, because we already know what one and two look like. Please provide span, fan speeds and temperature pairs. Provide minimum temperature in Celsius, then press enter. So minimum is going to be 50. Fan speed is going to be 12. And I'm just making odd numbers up here. I'm not really doing anything scientific. Fan speed will be set to 12 once the temperature reaches 50. Next will be 62 degrees Celsius. And the fan speed will be at 54%. And then let's do all out 100, well, in Celsius. We did 50, 62, let's now do 70. And the fan speed will be at 100%. All right, oh, well, we can keep going. I don't really have any more to go after 100%. 70, 100, 70, 100, 70, 100. Let's do it without putting anything in. We have six saved pairs. Changes should take effect now. That that seems very uh, wishy-washy. Should take effect now. Not will, but should. All right, let's look at the Etsy Argon 1D.comp file. My favorite editor is Joe's own editor. So first I'm going to install that. You may have a different favorite editor and I'd love to hear all about it in the comments down below. It's time for some holy wars about favorite editors. Okay, that makes sense. You just kind of put them in until you get tired of putting them in. So what I will do is I will remove, 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 and I will change these back to their normal defaults. 10%, 60 is 55%, and 65 is 100%. Save and exit. Could not make a backup file. Oh, because I'm not root, so I might not be able to save it. Oh, I can save it. Let's see. Argon 1. Yep, I was able to save it. Perfect. Now, if you get all the way down here and you don't want these Argon 1 tools, you can do Argon 1 dash uninstall. But I want them because I want my fan speed to be controlled. Let's get over to a VNC session. And they said there was going to be some icons on the desktop. And if they are, I will show them to you. And if they aren't, we won't do VNC. Okay, and we are back to the Raspberry Pi VNC desktop. And there are indeed two icons on the desktop, the Argon 1 configuration. Let's run that now. All right, let's execute this. And this looks very familiar. Yes to continue. And let's pick two to adjust the temperature. So this is not a graphical tool. This is just the desktop icons that get you to the text tools that we already ran. So there we go. Okay, so this is a slick little Raspberry Pi case. It does the thing. Most importantly, it looks sexy on the desk. I could look at this thing on my desk and not be uh, not be upset all day long. 
and uh, you can see the status lights on the Raspberry Pi that indicate that it is on and doing things through the transparent plastic on the bottom. Uh, Wi-Fi was pretty good. I was remote controlling it the whole time during the presentation. That was great. I love the fact that the ports are only on one side. That is perfect. And I like the idea that the case lets you expand to add the storage sled on the bottom. And now this thing can boot off of USB. So that could be your only storage medium. So get rid of those uh, pesky SD card write time limits, write amount limits. Anyway, this is a great little product. There is a link to where to get this on Amazon down below. I would highly recommend this. Nice, solid metal construction, fantastic heat dissipation capabilities. It worked great. And I just can't say anything better about it because I already said a lot of nice things about it. I mean, I guess I could, but then you'd start to not believe me anymore. Either way, thanks for being awesome, and we'll see you in the next one.